first and like most immediate need for a robot is to be able to manipulate these threads and insert them into the brain. So the implant is kind of like this little puck of the secret sauce active electronics and the electrodes are these tiny little flexible threads that each at the very end have multiple little electrodes that if you get those electrodes next to a neuron, they can record what that neuron is doing. The nature of the device that we're implanting and the way that we're implanting it allows for minimal reaction of the brain tissue to our device to increase the lifetime. In order to do that, the devices are extremely fragile. The threads that we insert that contain the electrodes are tiny, sort of on the order of like 50 microns wide, five microns thick, 20 millimeters long. And so if you take one of them and sort of toss it into the air, it'll sort of float off like a piece of hair. And those tiny little flexible hairs are too small for a human to handle, even like with tweezers. And that's where the robot comes in. Computer vision and software, essentially high reliability software, is really important. We've gone from not really being able to track the moving brain, which is critical for humans because the human brain moves a lot, to having this OCT-based system that essentially gives us this 21 hertz real-time view of a 3D volume of the brain that we're looking at. What you're trying to do is like very fine uh, computer vision tasks and movement tasks to grab these threads. It's like an extremely hard engineering problem. I would say the next big goal for the robot would be to make it so that there's minimal neurosurgeon interface. That a neurosurgeon can walk in and talk to the patient, make them feel comfortable about the procedure, walk them through exactly what's going to happen, and then essentially click go. And the robot will be able to figure out exactly what the specific topography of the patient will be, target the areas, and take the surgery from the patient coming in and sitting down to them walking out of the door that same day. If we make this so automated and safe and fast that like anyone can get it, even the idea of really fast keyboard and mouse for myself that I don't need to use my hands for is like super alluring. I'm excited for the robot to help a human patient restore someone's motor function that they lost. That would be super cool. Over the last three years, Neuralink has felt like it has grown from a garage project into a real product. Not only do you get to work on robots, but you also get to interact with other people who don't typically use robots. I knew nothing about neurosurgery before coming to Neuralink. I can come in as a robotics expert and know that there are neurosurgeons here and neuroscientists here who essentially can act as my like knowledge base for neurosurgery and neuroscience. That's why I think it's the place to be.